Good morning. My name is Vala, and I am a bad plant mom. Good morning, nature nerds. Welcome back to the orchard. It is summertime. It feels like summertime. And summertime means maintenance around here. As you can see, I've been letting one of the major items get away from me. It's been real stormy here lately. Like I'll, I'll plan on going outside and weeding or whatever, and then boom, rain, boom, lightning. And then 20 minutes later, it's gone, but it's wet, so I can't work outside. Thanks, Thor. Anyway. Task number one is just weeding. Ideally, we want to keep things clear out to the drip line of the tree. It doesn't always work out. We do the best we can with the time and energy that we have. Also, it is the time to come through and snip all these little suckers off and any little water sprouts that are getting in the way of things. If they're a little bit bigger, I go through and chop them into weeny pieces and they become mulch. Ah, nope. mulch. Ta-da. We just chop and drop out here. It's quick and simple, replicates nature. Item number two is picking up a lot of fruit. The books that I'd been reading earlier this year made it sound like, uh, yeah, for like two weeks in the spring, the trees are going to thin their fruitlets and everything's going to drop and you'll pick them up and that's the end of the story. That's not what's going on here. <laughs> I don't know if it's a natural process that I wasn't aware of or if I just didn't thin them well enough this spring, which I know now that I, I definitely did not, but every damn day there's new fruitlets dropping off these trees and you got to pick them up because number one, I don't want peach pits going through the lawnmower. Number two, they're attracting animals to the yard. Woo. Something big is pooping here. Yeah, I think that's bear. That's my house. And number three, the, just like with the fruit mummies that we were talking about before, if um, you let whatever larva, whatever bacteria, whatever fungus is in them get back into the ground, they're going to complete their life cycle and come back in force next year. Again, the ideal would be every day, but I've been aiming for a couple times a week to get out here and go on the world's nastiest Easter egg hunt. Yum, yum. Step three is the most fun one, I think. I get to mow the lawn. <laughs> I never understood when people would say, oh, I, I love my car so much. It's, it's my whole world. What, what are you talking about, man? I've never had a connection to a machine like that before until I got this riding mower. <laughs> if you ever have an opportunity to test drive a zero turn riding mower, bruh, put it through its paces. These are the most fun little freaking toys I have ever had. Here, I'll, I'll see if I can't prop you up, take you for a ride. Safety first.
Quick update on our flower friends, in case anybody is interested. The borage, oops, hold on. The borage did really beautifully this spring. Made some lovely little purple flowers, had some nice big leaves, like these cuties here. And then the heat of the summer came and they just kicked it. But they did really, really well while, uh, you know, while the weather was nice. So I think I'll try these again next year too, maybe with um, something bigger and leafier around them to give them a little bit of shade. We'll see what we've got. I don't take care of any of these. I just threw them in the ground to see what was going to make it in our climate. And so this one's a maybe. The lupin died. I think it likes colder temperatures. They, those didn't do at all. They were just immediately cooked. Nasturtium, also dead. It never really got... I think I hit this one with the lawnmower because I don't even see it anymore. Um, <laughs> uh, it never really got bigger than an inch tall. It never spread. I think it needed more shade and more water than it, it was getting here. But the marigolds next to it are doing fine and dandy. Look at them pretties. And over here, look at these guys. Whoa, color. I planted a couple packets of pumpkins because I wanted to try to shade out the weeds around some of these trees that are hard to mow around. I started them all in one hill and then I thinned them out and I made kind of a circle. I don't know if you can see them, kind of a circle around like this apple tree. The branches smack me in the head every time I'm mowing around it. So I said, I will protect you with pumpkins. And they're doing okay. They haven't died yet, but I think they need steadier water than we're getting. Right now, like I said, it's stormy. We'll get like a short, fast rain but that's it. What we need is like a, uh, a lasting gentle rain for these. I think, that's my hunch. And here's my poppy bed. They're doing so good. They were looking more yellow than they are now. I added a little bit of compost. So I think they just needed nutrients. And I saw a pink one the other day. It died, but uh, I've never seen a pink one before. I've always known them to be this beautiful yellow-orange color, so that was cool. Hey, good morning. It's the, um, 20 somethingest of August. I don't, I don't know. It's August. Remember how I said I wasn't going to spray anything on the orchard this year? I lied. We have Japanese beetles. It's not the worst infestation in the world. They haven't completely defoliated anything, but the trees are looking pretty rough now that the beetles have come and gone. So we need to combat that. Japanese beetles are very invasive here. They have no natural predators. There's nothing out there that has learned to eat them. So there's no like native bird or wasp or anything I can attract to my yard to help balance out the problem. So for this one specific issue, I'm going to go ahead and spray something. This morning I applied uh, 500 million, no, 50 million, Heterohabditis bacteria fore. <laughs> These guys. Um, I just finished spraying beneficial nematodes out on the orchard. 
These are microscopic soil worms that are going to hunt down the, uh, the grubs, the larvae of the Japanese beetle in their nasty little grubby forms. And they have like a symbiotic relationship with a bacterium. So they, they chomp on the grub and then they inject it with a bacteria that like turns it into goo. And then the nematodes all swarm and eat what's left of the grub, which is pretty metal. Um, I'm crossing my fingers. It's still, like now, mid end of August is the time when the grubs are hatched out of their eggs and close enough to the surface that they're, they would be vulnerable to something like this. However, the weather is not cooperating. We've had like, they, they die over 95 degrees. The nematodes don't do over 95. And like every other day has been over 95. So the next like two or three days should be in the high 80s. It's not looking like it's cooling down anytime soon. So we're crossing our fingers. I'm probably gonna do this again in like April. And we'll see if that makes a dent or not. Wish me luck. Stay cool out there, hydrate, set out water for your animals. Okay, bye.